So hi, everyone. Welcome to the JMM. I'm Ursula Witcher, and I'm here from Math Reviews, also known as Math Signet, to talk a little bit about what Math Signet is and what sorts of things you can do with it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Um, so Math Signet is a website. It's mathsignet.ams.org. And it is something that is controlled by library access. Usually a library would have a subscription. However, we also have a couple of ways to get remote access. One of them is um, via whatever kind of proxy system your library has set up. So that's something worth chatting with a librarian or a math librarian. The other is if you're on campus that has access to math sign -Net, uh, we have something called remote access. So if you're physically somewhere where on the network, you can use math sign -Net. You can tap this little remote access um, image here, which has the picture of the world, and then your browser will be linked to the database and you can check it wherever you go. So that's this beautiful, you can see I have 69 days left until my browser loses its herring. So just for future reference, this is how you get to it. Um, we also have some free tools. So maybe I'll show, start by showing you um, one of my favorite free tools, which is the collaboration distance. Um, does anyone want to shout out a favorite mathematician? Riemann? Riemann. Uh, let's see if we... He's Bernard Riemann, right? I believe so, with an H, I think. And if we look and see, are there papers? Oh, you're right, it is Bernhard. Um, so um, he wrote a paper with Edmund Landau and Landau wrote a paper with Harold da Davenport. And then Davenport wrote a paper with Erdish. Um, so Riemann's Erdish number is three. But you can also play the collaboration distance game with all kinds of authors. Uh, so a little known fact that I enjoy is that Misha Collins, perhaps best known as the um, supernatural actor, uh, has also written uh, some computer science papers building on his participation in the MIT mystery hunt. So if we want to know how far is it uh, from uh, Bernard Riemann to Misha Collins, the answer is that it's seven hops going through Edmund Landau, Harold Davenport, Polya, Tarjan, Ramshaw, and finally Geraldine Warren. So we have this database that has a ton of different kinds of mathematical information in it. Let me go ahead and look at one of these individual papers. So here's the actual paper that was the final link in that chain of collaboration. It's got a whole bunch of authors, one of whom is Catherine Leonard, who's a mathematician, computer scientist, data scientist, uh, one of whom, of course, is Misha Collins. And we have bibliographic information about it here. And then we also have a summary. In this case, we've just taken uh, the author's own summary, but often you would see here a, a description that was written by a volunteer of what this paper is all about. Another thing that's really handy to know about as you're working on, if you find yourself writing a math paper yourself, is that we have all kinds of formats that you can look at this information in, including a PDF if you want to maybe see some no mathematical notation better, but also a couple of different kinds of reference formats. 
So for instance, here's the BibTeX version of this. This is something that I could cut and paste and stick straight out into a bibliographic entry. And that will save a lot of time as you're putting references together. Now, another thing that you can do is you can look in a couple of ways at profiles of individual mathematicians. So I went to the University of Washington when I did my PhD. So maybe I'll look for Rebecca Thomas, who's one of the professors who I had there. Here's Rebecca's profile. She is, um, here we have a unique identifier, which is the author ID. We have a bunch of different information about different ways that she's published. Sometimes she publishes with her full name, sometimes with just her initials, sometimes with name, with middle initial. We keep track of all that stuff. Uh, you can log in with your AMS login um, as you've already done to sign into the JMM. And that would allow you to edit a photo here. Um, we also have the ability, if you edit a profile, to put in other versions of your name that might be in other alphabets. Uh, so for instance, um, if you have often used your name in Cyrillic or in Chinese characters or in something like that, you can put that kind of information into your profile too. I also, by the way, have the ability to update profile information. So if you find yourself having published a mathematical paper and you want to include some information, feel free to email me. My email is uaw.ams.org. I'm happy to stick that into the database for you. Right. So what else can we find out about what Rekka has done mathematically? Well, scrolling down here, on the right, we have a tagged cloud that has all kinds of different information about the different stuff the different people that uh, she's co collaborated with. Um, here, there are a bunch of them, including Bernd Sternfels and Joao Govea, who is the graduate student with me at the University of Washington. We can see down here at the bottom a couple of different tag clouds. Um, there's one by area and one by citation. This is a really good way to get a quick idea if you're thinking you might maybe be interested in working with someone about the different kinds of mathematics that they work on. So you can see here, this is someone who has a pretty broad list of fields that they work across. Rekha Thomas works in ring theory and also in operations research math programming. She's done some stuff with discrete geometry. Um, she's someone whose maybe core mathematical interest would be sort of combinatorial algebraic applications of mathematics. And that's something that you can get at a sort of big level just by looking at the tag cloud and seeing what are the different areas that she's publishing in. Now, if we want to go look at her publications, if we click in, there's a list of all kinds of stuff. Um, the mark that says pending says that someone is still working on a summary of that paper. Um, if it says reviewed, then we have a contributed summary. So let's just go look at one of those for a second. Um, here's another example of what kind of information we would have. You can see that there's also information about references. So if you wanna search up the references or see how papers link to each other, you can walk through the citation network. And then on the left, we've got a bunch of different information about what her paper was like. Um, you can see a list of institutions. Um, up top, of course, is University of Washington since Rebecca Thomas is currently at the University of Washington, but there are also other institutions where either she might've been in the past or where um, common collaborators were. There's um, faceting if you wanna look at what other mathematicians she's working with. 
And there's also some stuff about what kind of journals she can publish it in. All right. So let's take another paper and check it. I want to take a second to look at another piece of information we hadn't focused on so much, which is when you're looking at individual papers, um, we have each author and then after the author there's a little code that says where they are. The first part of the code is going to be a country. So one is for the United States and then you can see here we've also got a D that's for Deutschland or Germany. We've got uh, an F for someone who's in France. And then the rest of the information that pops up there is information about the particular department that someone is in. So if we go ahead and follow the path through to 1WA, that tells us, okay, 1WA is the math department. I'm going to open up another tab here and do a search. If I'm in the publications tab, which is the sort of main search of math sign -in, there are a bunch of different ways that you can search for publications. Often you'll be, you'll know what sort of paper you're looking for. And so you might be searching by either a piece of the author's name or a piece of the title name. Uh, you can search for text that's anywhere if you just want to do a reference search on a specific subject. But here notice there's also the ability to search by institution. So I can go grab that 1WA code. And this should give me now all sorts of stuff that has been published by people who are from the University of Washington. This tells me something about how people are publishing at UW. Um, we can see that there's lots of papers and probability and PDEs and operations research and various kinds of algebras. Um, but that might maybe be too much historical information for you because of course this is everyone who has ever published through all of time and math departments change, mathematics changes. So maybe you want to focus down, say, on just what kind of work did people publish at UW in 2019. If, say, you were interested in applying to that program or maybe applying for a job there, and you were wondering if stuff linked up with your personal interests. Uh, well, OK, in that case, we can see who are the most prolific authors in the department for that year, Gunther Ullman, who does um, a lot of interesting inverse problems with, for instance. And then what sorts of stuff do we have? Well, again, lots of probability papers, and then a bunch of associative ring and algebra papers, and combinatorics, and some different kinds of geometric papers. So that's one way to sort of browse around and see what people are doing at the publication level in terms of individual departments. Another way that you can go looking is you can instead try to find various information about Um, so when I went and looked at citations, I actually got a whole bunch of different new tabs that you can look at. You can look at citations to a particular author, to a particular journal, to some kind of subject or year. Um, I like the top 10 list. If you're it's free if you're just looking at top 10. You can also look at top 100. This gives you information about citations within our database. One of the cool things about our database is that we do have a bunch of mathematicians like me working for it. And so 
unlike something like Google Scholar, which will just sort of drag in everything in the universe on the web and might have six different PDFs of what is essentially the same research. When we say something has been cited, we mean that it has specifically been cited in a reputable math journal um, that's a serious peer review. Um, so this is a nice way to just sort of browse through and kind of get a sense of like, what are some of the um, most impressive journals in mathematics or the ones that everyone is talking about when people are sort of rattling off names of journals that they think are cool. What do they even mean about that? But you can also look for information about um, how often an author has been cited. Or you can look for information about a journal. Um, so let's try communications in algebra. We've got a couple of different communications in algebra. I want the one that really is just con algebra. And I can ask who is writing to this journal. So this gives me cool information about what's going on sort of across time. Um, you can see that this is actually something that's kind of cool about math. People go on reading math for a long time since of course math goes on being true. Um, and so even just looking at information from a journal from a particular year, um, there will be a bunch of different citations to it. Um, in 2018, people cited um, issues of communications in, our, in algebra going back a long, long time. All right. So we've looked at some of the things you can find in terms of publications. We've looked at some of the things you can find in terms of authors. You can look at information about journals directly. Um, so for instance, Involve, which is a journal that publishes a lot specifically of undergraduate research. If you want to publish an Involve, you have to have at least some of the authors on the paper being undergraduate authors. Um, so we have some information about it here, including a link to the website if you wanted to go look at the website. And down at the bottom, we have a bunch more citation information. And then if you look toward the very bottom, well, we see some of the people who have cited and who have um, published in this paper and been extremely highly cited, um, which is good to know because in a journal of undergraduate research, a lot of these people might be people who are um, mentoring a lot of undergraduate research. So they might be folks you might want to chat about, about say, finding projects for yourself or looking for good summer programs, things like that. And we have some information about what kinds of areas people are doing research in this journal. It's also possible to look if you're looking at the citations to the journal, uh, we can get, um, here it is in graph form, just numbers, but you can also get a table of what are the other kinds of journals that are citing it, um, which is interesting if you have done some research and you kind of maybe would like to publish it, but you aren't sure where to send it. Um, well, the journals that cite Involve are journals that are in some sense the peers of Involve. So we can see that linear algebra and applications has a lot of similar research going on. So does the Australasian Journal of Combinatorics, so does Integers, um, so does the Monthly, which is one of the MAA's flagship publications. Um, so it's sort of like a set of journals that are interested in similar things, which is another way to bounce around it. Maybe I'll pause here for a second and ask if folks have questions. Oh, I had a quick question. Uh -huh. 
Um, oh, hi. Um, so, uh, I think it was the last thing you had covered before um, this topic where you could look at um, uh, professors or faculty who were published in like undergraduate research journals to see um, like what kind of professors are involved in that kind of work to see if you could like reach out to them as mentors. Could you go over that quickly again? Sure. Um, so what I did here was I went um, to the journal search and I looked up Involve, which I knew is the journal that does a lot of undergraduate research. Um, and when I got to that journal page, at the top it has a bunch of stuff that's just like general information about the journal. But as you sort of scroll down the page and look at all this stuff, at the very bottom of the page on the right hand side, there's a list of authors who have had, say, the most papers in this journal. Um, this is for the last three years in this tab, but we could also look over all time. Um, now, of course, some of these people could be someone who had just like the most astonishing REU project of all time, right? And they managed, um, but it's more likely that there'll be folks who have been mentoring undergraduate research. Um, so we can see here, for instance, Leslie, Leslie Hogman has published and involved six times. Um, that tells you that she's someone who has been really active in um, trying to mentor undergraduate research programs and might have interesting ideas, uh, both on sort of how that network works and what the actual topics are. And then if you wanted to just click and follow the link, well, here she is, here's what she looks like. Uh, she's currently at the American Institute of Math. And so we have a bunch more information about what kind of stuff she does. In this case, scrolling down, she does lots of combinatorics and linear algebra. So that would give you a, an idea of what sorts of stuff she was thinking about. Thank you. Other folks have questions? So let's see what else you might be want to do. All right. Um, so we should talk a little bit about the math subject classification which is a way that we divide up sort of lots and lots of big topics in mathematics. We have here an option to search the MSD, but you can just click on the link and get a drop-down menu that shows you all of the different categories, uh, which is a nice way of getting a really sort of huge um, bird's eye view of what sorts of things people are thinking about in mathematics. Uh, some of these, um, the math subject classification is reworked every 10 years. So we just implemented the MSC 2020. Uh, there are a couple of things that are marked not currently valid here because at some point, for instance, the kinds of number theory that people were doing in the 1960s are fairly different from the kinds of number theory that we're doing now. So we reworked the classification system a little bit and stopped using the old code. Uh, but you can just browse through and see, okay, uh, there's general mathematics, stuff like recreational mathematics, history and biography, and then number theory, algebraic geometry. If you've ever wondered just sort of what are all of the subjects of mathematics, sequences, series, geometry, so on and so forth. Um, and then as you get into the higher digits, you get also a lot of uh, ways of applying mathematics. Um, 
including mathematics education and different kinds of physics. We have lots and lots of different applications of physics in the database. It's also possible to look at classifications. Um, so for instance, if you're interested in graph theory, you can go ahead and search and you'll get back all different sorts of different kinds of subjects where people might do graph theory. Um, you, you can see it breaks down in terms of enumerative combinatorics, in terms of specifically graph theory on trees and so forth, in terms of category theory, computer science. And then again, if you jump back into the main part of the database and go back home to Math SciNet, um, another way that you can search publications is you can search by the MSC, um, which is again, this math subject classification code. So I could say to myself, okay, well, I know that I'm really interested in graph theory that's gonna be coded as O5C. I can search the database and see what kind of papers are there. Well, there are tons and tons and tons of like 90,000 papers almost that we pull up on graph theory. But then if I again specify oh, maybe I wanna look at 2019 publications in graph theory. That cuts it down to a slightly more reasonable number. That also lets me see what are the institutions where this is a really, really active kind of publication field. So there's some in Hungary, um, there's some in China, there's the University of Birmingham in the UK. Well, that's kind of cool. The University of Birmingham might not be like, right at the top of your mental list of places that are super, super interested in combinatorics. But we could then restrict just to that subject and we could start looking around again. Okay, so who is it at the University of Birmingham? Here are a bunch of authors who have been really active in, public, in publishing graph theory in this particular year. Um, so the way of sort of brainstorming institutions that you might not otherwise realize you might be interested in networking with people from there and stuff like that, uh, sort of wandering through, in this case, by subject field area. Other questions folks have? Sure, I would like to ask a question. Go ahead. So I wanted to ask about, I guess, as an undergraduate student, say, uh, looking into various PhD programs and trying to do our due diligence, right? What are some things you would look for in terms of, I guess, yeah, in terms of advisors that might be good to work with? So for example, some professors at certain schools may not be taking any students, for example, or may not have mentored students before. So what are some things we can look for uh, within math sign that, that would tell us this person might be a good advisor or this person might be someone who we should talk to, or maybe on the other hand, like maybe we're not so sure if this person would be a good advisor. Right. Um, so definitely this is something that you should use uh, personal information as well as impersonal information, right? Like this is, um, a, I would use MathSignet as a tool to find several people who I might be interested in talking to. And then I would also probably want to see if I could maybe chat with graduate students in the program and see what their personal experiences were. Um, but Certainly some stuff you can find out. Let's just, I'm gonna look up the author page for Chuck Duran, who's my own PhD advisor. 
Uh, so what can you learn about Chuck Duran by looking at his author profile? Um, first of all, one of the things you're going to see straight away is that this is somebody with a ton of co-authors. That tells you something about the, the style that somebody has as an advisor. People um, sometimes choose to write papers with their students, and they sometimes avoid writing papers with their students and try to encourage their students to have only single author papers. And that's partly also a question about your own mathematical style. Um, so we can see here that, um, hey, Chuck is someone who really does like collaborating with all kinds of people. And we can see that he's got a bunch of different ongoing collaborations. Scrolling down, we've also got the sort of tag cloud of areas. Um, in this case, geometry, but a surprising amount of quantum theory. This is a mathematical heritage of mine that has an overlap between geometry, quantum theory, and some stuff in several complex variables. Uh, so that's a list of stuff that if, you know, if Chuck were your advisor, he might expect you to be willing to learn about these various topics. So if you were coming in here and being like, oh, but I hated complex analysis. I know I'm interested in algebraic geometry, but I really want it to be algebra all the way and never make me do anything analytic. You might sort of look at this and be like, oh, maybe that would be a question I would ask about possible topics. And then if you dig down and look at publications, um, Hey, Chuck's most recent publication has was co-authored with me. Like it is indeed a collaboration that's gone on for a long time. Um, you see something that's a little bit about how frequently someone has been publishing. Um, so the one thing that I would want to do, especially scrolling down and just looking at the sidebar in terms of what has sub someone's publication research rate been like. Um, if you have someone who's maybe getting close to retirement um, or who has been dealing with other stuff in the universe, as goodness knows a lot of us have in, in the past year or so, and has had a publication rate that slowed down, you might be able to see, huh, like maybe they might not be taking as many students right now or they might not be as research active right now. Or it can also happen that somebody changes areas. So if you look at the most recent paper from someone and you see that those most recent papers in the database are maybe different from the thing that you were hoping they might work with you on, that would be good information to have. Other questions? Um, I, I had another question. Uh -huh. So, like, if you're someone who's, like, pretty sure that they're interested in going to grad school, but, like, you're pretty new to math, like, you'd only decided to major recently, like, um, I sometimes, like, I notice that, like, a lot of, like, the research, like, I have trouble making sense of just because, like, I don't even know what that looks like. So, like, what is, like, a, what would be, like, another good metric that you you could use math sign up for to determine what grad school pro programs would be good for you. Uh huh. Um, so one piece of advice that I got um, when I was applying to graduate school, um, I knew that I was very generally interested in doing some kind of geometry, but I didn't know exactly what kind of geometry. Um, and so I got the advice to go and look at big programs. Um, so you should definitely be able to get a sense of kind of the size of an institution. Um, and let's see. Um, so I'm trying to think of like, Let's try and start in this column here. Um, so Dartmouth has a really prestigious graduate program 
but it's also a very um, small graduate program. It doesn't take a lot of people per year. And you can see to some extent, if you go look at the numbers of papers that have come out in the department, um, there's about 50 to 80 papers coming out of Dartmouth in a given year, where if you pick a really big math department, like say UCLA um, or um, UC Davis or something like that, you might see many, many more papers. And you'll also see, okay, it looks like they're doing really a lot in number theory and combinatorics and stuff like that. And so even if you're not familiar with the exact details of what's going on, like, you know, you don't have a good sense of everything that's happening in, in number theory, you might still have be able to say like, oh, but if I'm interested in doing applied mathematics, this might not be um, a department where I would have a ton of options to work on applied stuff in. It looks like they're doing either more pure stuff or more stuff that's related to, co to computer science as opposed to say differential equations describing what geological stuff looks like. Um, and so in that sense, you can get a very sort of like big broad picture kind of view. Um, this is also something where you can look um, around at the department um, website as well as in math finance. Um, something I would actually also consider doing is chatting with the folks in your home department and asking, have there been people who have recently gone to grad school from your undergrad institution? And if so, where did they go? Um, because you may be able to sort of like track them through the database a little bit, see who they've been working with, what kinds of things they've been working on. Um, and that might give you another way of sort of like having a path in or having some ideas of like what kind of things you might wanna explore. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, I saw a couple questions in the chat about getting access, and it is indeed the fact that you often have to go in through your university library website. Often university libraries have their own proxy, so you can um, sort of tell your library system to pretend that you're logging in from the library on campus, even though you're off campus. Uh, but that depends a bit on each individual library setup. So if you're not sure, this is definitely a question to take to your librarian. Other stuff folks oh. don't I'm sorry, I may have spoken over somebody, but just a quick follow up on that. Um, what are about folks who are uh, imminently leaving an institution. Um, how do we access this? Is it possible at all once you lose your uh, you know, in, uh, university access? Um, you do need some kind of university access, um, although um, the remote pairing is an option. So if you can get your laptop to an institution that has access and pair it remotely, that works for, I think, 90 days. Um, so you could save it. You could, if you wanted to become an itinerant mathematician who, you know, hiked over to the local university campus, paired your laptop, and then wandered off to pour through the mathematical literature. Other stuff folks are wondering about?
My university kind of uses like a separate like search thing. So it is searching math sign it, but it looks a little bit different. Um, is there any way like around that? Cause it seems like there's more features on the actual like math sign it site. Uh, so you might have to ask your particular librarian. I suspect that there are multiple ways to access it or like another way to get in. Um, but without like sitting down and looking at your particular setup, I can't guess off the top of my head. Okay, great. Thank you. So another thing that might be fun to look at. Let's look up Pamela Harris. Just to pick, pick a favorite mathematician who's at the JMM. Uh, so here's Pamela. She has put in an awesome picture of herself on her profile page. I wanted to point out to you that another thing you can do uh, from that sign up is that it's linked into the Mass Genealogy Project. So if you're interested in how Pamela got her start, well, the Math Genealogy Project will tell you uh, that she went to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and worked there with Jeb Willenbrand. So this is another potential way to kind of browse around while you're at the JMM is if you do meet someone or you see a talk or you see something that you think is really inspiring, you can go back and say like, hey, where did they get started? You know, like, the UW Milwaukee seems pretty cool. It's got cool math going on. Maybe I could find more about it. And that would be another way to do some sort of start out inspirational kind of hunting for things you might want to do. Group questions? Priscilla, this is Nicola, also from the AMS. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to thank you all for coming. And since this is the student panel, I'm going to stick a link in the chat to a really quick three question survey we're hoping you will be able to answer. Um, because one thing we really want to make sure we're doing is making math science, giving you the tools you need to get the most out of math science as students. So um, I'm just look for that in the chat in a minute. So I think at this point, I'm going to cut off the formal presentation um, and stop screen sharing, at least for the moment. Uh, but I am going to stick around for the next 20 minutes. So I saw a couple people had private questions or if there's something you're wondering about or you just want to chat in, in a more a more informal way, um, absolutely hang around and we can go around talking. Thank you for the presentation. It was very helpful. Absolutely. Thank you for coming. Thank you.
I see a question in chat about other resources that you could use. Um, so one resource that I would recommend is individual department websites, specifically looking at lists of faculty and at the descriptions that departments have about research. There are also various consortia and there are prizes. The AMS gives a prize every year to a math department that has done something really good in terms of having a program that gets people engaged in mathematics. Um, some of those are undergraduate programs, but some of them are graduate programs. And it's ways to find out about graduate programs that are doing unusual things or that have done a really good job at mentoring students. Um, so I would look for prize winning programs. There's a group called the Math Alliance, uh, which I will stick in chat in a second. Um, so the Math Alliance is a consortium of grad programs that's interested in mentoring more underrepresented and marginalized students. And it's often the case that departments that have thought carefully about how to engage people who don't usually go into mathematics are departments that have thought more carefully about how to support their graduate students in general. So that's a list of programs that I think it's worth being aware of just in terms of places that might be good for graduate mentoring. This is also something that while you're here at the JMM, I would really encourage you if you have a chance to do other networking things like this or just to chat with people uh, who are in the process of getting their PhDs or who have recently gotten their PhDs. They often have interesting ideas about sort of what's going on, um, what their experiences have been. Um, and may be able to put you in touch with other folks who might have cool ideas about what kind of math and what kind of uh, people might be congenial to collaborate with. There's also the grad school fair during the during the uh, JMM. So if you're in the platform on the left hand side where all the options are, you can see grad school fair and there are many uh, grad programs represented and I think most of them have times you can connect with them. Um, so you can give that a look. And these days, it being 2020, there are a bunch of discords that are springing up for sort of chat about mathematical topics. For instance, in my area, Ravi Vakil has a discord. Um, centered on his algebraic um, geometry course sort of burgeoned off into more things. Um, so you might be able also to ask around on um, various platforms of social media and find other people who are in a similar situation who are sort of new grad students or who are just thinking about starting grad programs who might have good advice. All right, looks like we're just coming up on the end of time here. I should probably give you a little bit of time to take a deep breath, maybe get a cup of coffee and look around for your next session and figure out where that is since there's a ton of stuff going on. Uh, but thank you so much everyone for coming. 
And let me just dump my email address into the chat. My email address is uaw at ams.org. That's my initials. Um, I was a professor for five years at the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire before I decided to explore new opportunities in the American Math Society. Um, and I have spent a lot of time mentoring undergraduate research and thinking about mentoring questions in general. Um, so I'm totally happy if you want to just sort of do some more one on one brainstorming on this kind of thing. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to sort of browse around and think about new ideas and new places where people might be doing mathematics. 